Hey, welcome. Uh, my name is Mick Knutson. I actually want to go through um, a spring boot example and kind of walk somebody through some specific issues regarding trying to leverage a REST template client access against a Spring Boot application. So just to start here, I've got a simple Spring Boot application. It just actually displays a very simple um, REST uh, interface. I'm just going to run it real quick for you. Let's just to show you this. So let's run the app, this application. Right, I'm going to minimize it because I really won't need anything after this. I'll open this though and put this back. Now if we notice we're starting the application up and it should be running up and running. And just to verify it, we're going to actually go to localhost 8080. 8888, sorry, I changed the port uh, specifically so that I can also run Jenkins. So running this is now, as we see, shows Spring Boot Primer. So it successfully runs and the application's running. Now, one thing I wanted to point out though is that during the test phase, as I'm trying to test this, um, I could have a standalone test client such as this. Now, let's look at specifically what I've got. I actually have a, um, a URI, which is localhost 8888. And uh, essentially, I've got a fairly simple main method here. Um, all this really is doing is taking a first name and last name from the main menu or from the main method, creating a new REST template. This is going to be very important here in a minute. A REST template, and I'm just going to get a specific string object based on that URI slash first name slash last name. And I should get a result back that should be JSON, which is first name, and it's going to be Chuck in this ma manner. Last name is Norris, because I'm not going to put an input in, um, to verify that that works. Now, let's, uh, let's actually try to run this uh, specifically, right? Um, now, if I want to run this guy here, oops, sorry, let's open this. Let's actually run the test client first, okay? So the test client is running against the running server as we speak. Now I'm gonna run this as a Java application. And as we see over here in a minute, we actually have uh, that this is successfully run. This is, um, was successful. We didn't get any problems with this, with running, uh, with running this main method basically. And let's, uh, let's actually get a little bit better view of this. Let's go through here and, um, oops, sorry, let's rerun this guy. Run it one more time. Um, actually, I should have this in multiple areas. So let's go, here we go, there, test client, there we go. Sorry, I was on the wrong page. So now we have successfully echoed Chuck Norris, as we see here, successfully echoed the user, whichever user we used. So that's fine. Now. Here's the ambiguity that I want to try to point out. Now I'm going to close this and I'm also going to stop my system. Okay. So now basically the application's not running. Verifying this, we can go here, the site's down. Okay. So here's where the issue comes. Let's not use the test client. Now we're going to actually want to run a unit test against our application. So now I've got a couple things commented out and I'm gonna show you what's happening first. So let me show you a couple things. First of all, I am not actually setting up a specific web environment yet because I'm gonna show you what happens by default by not defining the web environment ports. Secondly, um, later we're gonna come in and uh, show you how Spring will allow us to assign a port so that we can use this locally. Now, right now, as we're going to see, we're actually going to um, be using 8080 as the local port, which is not going to be correct, but I'm going to show you this first. That's the, the default port that we're going to execute against, uh, or at least that Spring Boot starts up as. Next, I'm going to do something very similar to this. However, oh, I keep doing this. However, we're going to do this a different way. First of all, I'm going to do it 
a using a test rest template, which is a new test oriented rest template that you can use as a client, which is uh, much more friendly for doing testing like we're doing. And then I actually have the exact same version as I had in my test client main method, which is a standard rest template getting for an object, which is 8080. Now let's do this incrementally. I'm going to show you a couple steps and show you what the actual problems actually are. <clears throat> so focusing on this first rest template one without making any changes at this point, let us run this whole thing as a J unit test. Now I'm going to get rid of this, get a little bit more room over here. So now we're running and you see we have J unit over here in a second. <clears throat> Let's look at what actually happened. So maximizing these, both of these had issues. So the standard rest template, let's look at the issue we had. Um, specifically, localhost 8080 slash Chuck Norris in a, an unexpected end of file from server. Well, that's actually kind of interesting, right? That's not what we wanted. That's kind of a problem. Now, when we go over to rest template, well, we actually get the same error. So nothing's actually being found. And when we're going to go to look at the um, the actual code itself, we're going to find out, let's look. So 8080, well, that's probably one of the problems, but remember, I changed mine to port 8888 by default, okay? So let's just change one thing at a time, see if, it, see if anything changes and helps. So I'm gonna rerun this real quick. <clears throat> now, well, it looks like, no, we still don't have any changes, right? Okay. Well, even if we did 8888 or 8080. So if you notice, it's not working on either of the ports that we actually start up. Now, that's because there is something we need to do up here specifically for running a Spring Boot test. We have not set up the fact that we're trying to actually test a web environment. That's our missing piece right here first. There's a couple other pieces we're going to set up. So I'm going to uncomment this out. And let's rerun this again. Now, again, there are two ports but that are different, but we're going to go through one at a time so we can see the differences individually. Okay. Now notice, whoa, now the first one actually works successful. So our first test rest template works but the standard rest template does not actually work. The reason is, is because this is on port 8080 instead. So now what we need to do is, let's do 8888, and let's now try to change this again. Now that we don't need a port assigned or whatnot, we can run this again. <clears throat> They both successfully passed. Now, the only other thing that I would suggest as I go up here above, right? In the event that you wanted to change some other type of port, because just besides we actually have the web environment dot defined underscore port, there's other options we have like using a random port or other potential options. In order to leverage that, what we really need to do is we would like to have the port assigned from Spring Boot. Right now, I've hard-coded it. It's not what I wanna do. I would like to actually set the local server port, and I'm going to get rid of the port altogether. This way, I don't have duplicates, so if I change what port that I'm on, like if I decide to change from port 8888 to port 8080, I do not have to change my tests. Now, to verify this, I'm running this Again, let's verify that the same test rest template method right here using the test rest template succeeded. It did succeed and it was successful based on Spring Boot 
giving us the proper port. Now, as a last note onto this, one thing I will state is that on the bottom one here, uh, you know, I was hard coding this. This is not what I want to use and not what I want to uh, um, actually use in, uh, in practice. Um, I'm going to say to do remove this um, because I don't want to use this one in the rest template. I'd like to just leverage everything I can out of the test rest template. And again, this makes my unit tests a little bit more flexible because I'm not hard coding things like um, I'm not hard coding the whole URI itself, specifically the port, especially if I plan to change the port. Well, hope everybody likes that. Thank you much for your time. I'll talk to you soon.